वेलकम टू नेट बुक स्टडी दिस इज द एडिटोरियल एनालिसिस ऑफ थर्ड अक्टूबर 2023. लेट्स स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस थ्री एडिटोरियल्स वन फ्रॉम हिंदू टू फ्रॉम इंडियन एक्सप्रेस द फर्स्ट एडिटोरियल इज अबाउट डेवलपमेंट एंड पॉप्युलिज्म the both the concepts development as well as populism have been discussed with example from the perspective of electoral process uh, let's get into the discussion of this let us understand the concepts of development and populism with respect to this article see in this article what author is trying to say is whenever the ex- uh, elections are near the ruling party usually what it does is it usually go for uh, announcement of new projects or it te- uh, ruling parties tell people that we have built this infrastructure we have uh, completed uh, this particular project so ultimately it is trying to pose the developmental infrastructure projects as a poll promise it try to convince people that see we are undertaking all these projects and we come we, if we come to power again uh, definitely we will go into improve the infrastructural uh, projects or developmental projects in our tenure so this is with respect de- with respect to development and let's talk about populism see the opposition parties they usually go for this populism in a vague terminology if i have to explain populism then i can give you guys example of free electricity free transportation see these kind of guarantees it talks about populism ultimately when elections are near ruling parties they stick on to developmental projects and the opposition parties they usually talk about all these uh, new guarantees let us analyze the impact of both uh, populism and the developmental project uh, projects and let us uh, get into a conclusion that which one holds true on the ground in general uh, there is a tendency in the society they believe that see this developmental project they are considered f- for a long term ideal they believe that these kind of uh, developmental project this is going to be very much helpful for the society in a longer term at the same time populism uh, measures like uh, free electricity or uh, uh, unemployment allowances these kind of things are going to uh, detrimental are going to retarding the financial growth of the country this is the generalistic understanding about the development and the generalistic understanding about the populism let's discuss this in detail and that will help to analyze both the concepts and that will help help to understand both of them then we can get into the conclusion that which one suits better for our society the first thing is development see we have a developmental the author says that we have a developmental obsession in our country um, especially the ruling parties they have this this ability that uh, they keep on advertising what all the uh, developmental or infrastructure projects they have t- undertaken and uh, they advertise how it is going to change the lives of people this has become become the very generalistic way of approaching uh, poll promises these days the reason behind political parties sticking on to this developmental obsession is there is a physical infrastructure so they can show it to the people that look we have built this and this is going to help you this is going to help the economy so there is a convincing factor and it is an advan- advantage to the incumbent government so in this developmental obsession what is the role of political parties political parties are left with only three options either they can promise people that they are going to build higher scale of infrastructure or they can altogether reject the project saying that, saying it as a, a failure and they can uh, manipulate the thing saying that you know it is only affecting only few sections of people it is not affecting all the sections of people just like vande bharat the opposition was uh, telling that it is going to help the uh, upper middle class of the sections of the people it is not going to help the poor people or a people who belong to bpl category so opposition don't have much role in these developmental uh, obsession uh, criteria of poll promises see but we need to think from beyond poll promises uh, if we look at the developmental projects like a mega infrastructure there are two issues we need to taken care of and you know under analyzing these two issues will be helpful to understand the deeper impacts of these mega projects the first thing is the long term environmental consequences of these mega infrastructure projects and the financial burden these projects 
the financial burdens it put on the government the cost overrun and the additional cost that is going to cause high financial burden on the government see if if, if the government is facing financial burden it means that it is the taxpayers it is the government it, it is the people in turn you know indirect way it is the financial burden on the people and author has given two examples the one example is with respect to long term environment consequences here uh, recently we saw the uttarakhand and uh, himachal pradesh where the uh, cloud burst has caused the severe ecological damage in that region why did it happen see people are saying that this happened happened uh, because of a uh, natural disaster see it may be a natural disaster but the magnitude of disaster it increased due to the mega infrastructure projects in those eco sensitive zones so somewhere we ignored long term economic environmental consequences we were, we were mainly focusing on uh, economical aspects and we tried these mega infrastructure projects as a pole promises we were we used as a uh, convincing people that see we have built these infrastructure so what again we we are going to have further more development in the region but we ignore the long term environmental consequences this is the one negative uh, aspect of uh, mega infrastructure aspect and the second thing is second example is uh, see uh, every day we see in the news that uh, we have we are building national highways through throughout our country uh, under that na nhai that is uh, national uh, highway authority of india it is building a mega infrastructure but the thing is yes we are seeing the uh, number of kilometers of uh, roads is also rising it is all fine e infrastructure is getting extended but another aspect we need to focus here is even the debt levels they are also rising and this will not be sustainable for a long term and this is going to impose long term constraints for a development as of now for next five years next six years yes you are going to showcase the developmental uh, prospectus to the people but overall down the line after 10 15 years it is going to cause severe burden economically on the government itself so uh, what author is trying to say is see we have the developmental obsession that uh, that is going to change the, uh, the infrastructural uh, prospectus of our country and we government time and again say that this infrastructure will turn india into an economic superpower this is the belief system we have but if we analyze in deeper there are environmental consequences there are financial consequences and those can be seen only in a longer term and somewhere people are uh, manipulated to the fact that development is uh, de development is uh, ultimate and develop these uh, infrastructural project these developmental prospector prospectors it it is going to change the entire economic scenario of our country so this myth has to be taken away from the minds of the people this is what author uh, talks about and next the second concept the populism then author talks about populism in a positive way if we look at the idea of populi populism it has two dimensions one is political populism and second one is economic uh, populism see usually in general what exactly it talks about is the common interest of the people uh, if we take electricity or a transportation these are the necessity basic necessity of people of our country so targeting these aspects and convincing people that we are going to make a change in this perspective and we are guaranteeing people that these are the common interests and we are going to take positive actions in this direction so that all the people in our country or all the people of in that region are going to get uh, positive effects the idea of populism it, it believes that it represents the will of the people so this is the concept of populism with respect to uh, election, electoral scenario of our country. See another aspect you need to remember is populism allows majority to ride over the rights of minorities. Majority minority it means that see if there is a free electricity given by a government and who is paying for it it is the taxpayers and in our country the taxpayers the number is in still in single digit. So it looks like majority is taken taken as granted from uh, for, from minorities and majority to ride over the rights of minorities and author says that see we need a uh, rules and restraint uh, whenever we uh, go for populist measures these rules and restraints are necessary to control the short sighted political and economic policy 
uh, author stand is to support populism but author is uh, conscious of author is skeptical and he's saying that there is should be a rule based populist measures there should be restraint that uh, uh, whenever we are going for these kind of political or economic policies we make sure that we follow our standards we follow a restraint we follow a rule based order with respect to implementation of these populist measures and don't uh, go for those kind of populism activities where one set of people are going to be drained uh, their resources and uh, another set of people are given a free ride this should not be happen and another uh, concern is you know there should not be any compromise with long term development with short term political advantages see we talked about uh, short term political advantages in developmental obsession where author talked about see in uh, political parties what they are doing is they are showing the infrastructure and they are convincing people but in long term it is affecting our economy negatively but even in populism this factor is visible even these populism measures are viable for long term disadvantages so author is giving a uh, preventive measure the political parties should not compromise the long term development for a short term political advantages so this thing should be kept in mind for political parties see in a convention economic models economic model usually they focus on gdp they focus on uh, overall economic development like how much trade it is ha happening and the amount of foreign exchanges we have in our country we focus on these kind of things and it did not give much importance to distribution distribution in the sense that if the poor people is getting advantage of this development is he giving uh, getting food is he getting nutrition is he getting health facilities it conventional economic models are not giving importance to these kind acts of distribution they believe in trickle down effect see uh, the gdp based analogies are if gdp increases in our, in the country and eventually that uh, development will reach the poor people will reach the last sections of the society or the uh, vulnerable group of the society but in reality this is not so this is not happening even in our country we believe in that factor only the trickle down effect but is it happening that is a question mark even many country experiences they have showed that these kind of growth that that does not trickle down that easily and some sections of uh, population it always become outliers they don't get advantage of this economic development to make them ha have that uh, to make them uh, to be a part of economic development we need this kind of populism measures and these kind of population measures make sure that the economic growth reaches last mile also reaches the marginal sections of our society also for this reason author here he has taken a stand that yes populism he can be used to give that connection to a uh, large the last sections of our society and finally conclusion has given see our belief system was development project they were good for long term and these populist measures they were bad for a short term and even they are detrimental they are negatively affect our economic system these are the belief system with respect to the uh, developmental uh, idea and the populist idea but finally author has given that not 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 all the economic populist measures it is going to hurt our economy so we need to have some precautions whenever we go for these kind of populist list measures if we follow these precautions if we follow these restrictions then it is going to help our people and we cannot negate all the populist measures saying this is going to uh, give the free right for the people no this idea should be removed and also even the idea regarding developmental aspect especially the mega infrastructure project see on the longer run we discuss that environment cost of this uh, mega infrastructure project this create more burden than these uh, populist measures this populism it plays an important role to fill the gap between uh, development uh, where it is not reaching see in this article it has written a uh, pro populist uh, measures have been uh, stand has been taken in this article see it is up to you that which one you want to take if you want to support developmental pro aspects of uh, uh, poll promises then you need to go for at least four for uh, positive points with in with respect to developmental obsession if you support populist measures then you should be having four or five points with respect to populist measures here you will get three four points with respect to 
to it so you can use it in your answers according to the your ideology according to the way you want to present your answers i have discussed both the concepts but this article is pro populist measures so i have made it clear even before discussing article only but it is up to you which stand you want to take in the examination let's move to the next article the next article talks about winter crops and especially the rabi crops and what are the issues rabi crops are going to face and what are the uh, steps we need to take to make sure that uh, farmers get proper pricing with respect to winter crop let's get into the discussion of this every year india sees a monsoon rain between june to september and this year this monsoon rain ended in september with a deficit we did not receive the rain usually we get in our country so this affected the agriculture production in our country this year the area under rice and sugarcane it has increased but the thing is the pulses the area where pulses have been grown that area has been decreased so author is telling that this might lead to a price inflation especially for pulses so government should take proper steps to make sure that the inflation does not goes out of hand and uh, one of the possible solution is uh, usually country import, import this pulses from africa and myanmar to stabilize the prices but government has given assurance uh, for this winter crop let's see what are the government assure, assurance for winter crop this year usually ra rabi crops are sown in between october and november and recently there was a rabi conference and where agriculture ministry it had a discussion with agricultural experts and it has given some assurances to farming sector also the first thing is con uh, agree in this conference government told that we country has a ample fertilizer stock so we don't have to depend on imports already we have stocks this this will be helpful for rabi uh, production rabi crops production and the second thing is government is distributing heat resistant varieties and this heat resistant wheat variety this will be sown in total of 16 60% area if there is a heat wave kind of situation happens in between and this is going to help this variety heat resistance wheat variety it is going to help the production it is going to help country to maintain that food product food grain production in our country and the third point is see it is not only the wheat even thousands of climate resistant resilient crop varieties have been released by uh, various agricultural universities so on the whole a country is uh, uh, prepared for all the consequences whether it is climate related whether it is a resource related like uh, seeds fertilizers and even for the matter market related aspects are also been taken care of and this article talks about market related uh, steps the government is taking about if we look at all these government assurance one thing we can make sure that see government is focusing on high productive approach this is fine for 1960s and 1970s at that time our production was very less so we went for a green revolution at that time so it it was fine initially now we are exporting food grains to other countries now we need to change our approach and from highly productive approach to we need to switch on to food system approach and what exactly is food system approach that has been discuss in this article let's see the wheat production in last two years in 2122 it india produced 107 metric uh, million tons of uh, wheat and in 2023 uh, 2022 and 23 it was 112 metric tons there is a rise in production of this food grain but the thing is government production uh, government procurement of this food grains was low so indirectly what happened is because of low procurement it affected the price of these food grains especially wheat here and also it caused the inflation in our country government took some of the steps to reduce the inflation initially it put export ban of wheat and then uh, there was a russia ukraine crisis going on so it was very conscious regarding the food grain movement around the world and government also banned export of ata also from the country but still the inflation did not reduce so then government took a next step that it released the wheat from food corporation of india stocks to reduce the inflatory figures in our country see it helped to reduce the uh, prices of uh, wheat but the thing is this offloading of uh, wheat from food corporation of india this reduced the price lower than the minimum support price see if this happens this is going to be detrimental for uh, farmers income by offloading this high uh, wheat uh, uh, stock into the market it hurts the economic gain for the farmers because before 
this uh, the price was very high the market price was a uh, market price of wheat was very high so it was economically a uh, profit for the farmers but by offloading it the price went below the minimum support price and this has caused trouble for the farmers it shows that government is taking pro consumer bias see government author says that government should be taking farmer uh, uh, pro farmer uh, stand but it is taking pro consumer bi bias in policy framework see why author is telling is if you look at the pds system of our country public distribution system of our country around 800 million people they are getting free food food grains every month so they are already getting benefited on top of it you are going for market manipulation activities and that in yeah, that in turn is helping these consumers only so where should these farmers go and if the government take these kind of steps this is going to affect the profitable factor of profitability factor of farmers and this is where author is uh, against the uh, stand of government with respect to these food grains in our uh, market see uh, he is uh, is asking some questions here see who is government is trying to protect is it farmers or is it consumers and morally whom should it uh, protect these are the questions need to be addressed and if you look at it it is going to help urban middle class at the cost of farmers are we in a position to uh, balance this this is another questions and is it a rational policy to incentivize the farmers to produce more certainly it is not actually these things should not be supported uh, especially for market related by price handling it looks like you are disinvest incentivizing farmers you are punishing farmers for a uh, more production of food grains this should not happen this is called plundering of agriculture what you do is you are taking advantage of farmers you are procuring more from them to with a lower price and you are manipulating the market price also so what you are doing is you are plundering our own agriculture the political economy this is called a political economy of agricultural prices we should avoid this kind of situation we should avoid this kind of policy formulation in our country moving ahead author talks about rice also and author says that even story is not different for rice also whatever farmers uh, face the situation for wheat the same thing is also for, uh, faced by uh, rice growing farmers also see government put uh, import ban on uh, rice varieties other than basmati and so the input is also less and export duties were imposed on parboiled rice and minimum export duty was uh, imposed on basmati so what you are doing is you are manipulating the market also and the whole effort is to beat the market price below the msp the same thing happened the when the market price was increasing above the minimum support price the government released the food grains into the market making sure that price will be lesser than minimum support price and here even for the rice this is the same thing happened the food corporation of india that offloading happens and the same because of this offloading the market price fell below the minimum support price this offloading it feels like a dumping in a market and uh, what can farmers do if uh, fci dumps food grains below the economic cost they don't have any other option they cannot go to court and they cannot approach the, some third parties to manipulate these things they have no other option rather than accepting whatever government is doing see this should not be the way of handling farmers in our country see first and foremost thing we need to focus is there should be a balance between farmers and consumers of course there uh, the price should not be very high so that it will be unsustainable for consumer even that situation is very bad at the same time you should not make the farmers to suffer because they have to get back their economical cost whatever they are spending at least they should get a uh, labor cost and the economic spending they are doing if government takes steps to affect these kind of uh, economic cost retrieval also then it is going to affect the survival of these farmers then it is going to affect the productivity as well as profitability of farmers and fin finally way forward has been given see we need accurate estimation of production in our country we still don't have that 
and there is a necessity to monitor the prices the farmers get see we need to uh, pro uh, focus on both uh, productivity as well as profitability factor for the farmers from both the aspects we need to make sure that farmers are getting their due and let's monitor the progress of this crops every week now we have technology we can use this technology to monitor the price fluctuation to monitor the production of these pro crops uh, all we need is the political will all we need is implementation of this technology at uh, proper time with proper intervals see by doing these things it is going to uh, increase the profitability factor of farmers so we need to make sure that we use the, this technology and we have the concept of crop insurance also we can enhance the factor of a crop insurance so that farmers uh, losses are compensated due to the natural disaster or managed ma man-made disasters so all these factors are necessary to make sure that our farmers are getting their due see we must make sure that their farmers are receiving the money then only we can expect india can emerge and uh, emerge as a powerhouse of uh, powerhouse in agriculture we know that more than 40 percent in our uh, country they are still dependent on agriculture only they are crores of families they are main livelihood uh, uh, dependence is on agriculture only so it makes sense for the government to make sure that use this technology use this crop insurance and go for a proper accurate estimation of production and the monitoring of these prices and all these uh, all these factors it is going to affect the major uh, section of the people who are primarily dependent on agriculture only primarily dependent on agriculture income only so on the whole it is going to help the social upliftment also so economic upliftment is going to happen and in turn it is going to go for social upliftment also so these are the things we should not ignore and the activities like you know abrupt export bans and the stocking uh, uh, usually abruptly increasing the or decreasing the stocking limit these are also should not be encouraged by government see these are going to directly impact the farmers it is going to directly impact the uh, profitability factor of farmers so all these things government should take into the consideration and it should make sure that even state governments don't manipulate these kind of things because agriculture belong to a, uh, a state subject only the author finally telling government that see these are the steps you need to take and make sure that rabi crop of this year this winter crop both the productivity factor and the profitability fact profitability factor will not be manipulated by government let it be market decide the events market decides the pricing policy let government be the uh, easy facilitator for these processes this is about this article let's move to the third one the next editorial talks about investment scenario in our country uh, art in this article author has mentioned that the investment numbers are declining and he has given the reason why is it happening and he has given way forward also that what are the steps need to be taken in this direction let's get into the discussion of this if we look at the India's economy in the last quarter, India's growth was 7.8 percent, and it is not only the Indian numbers. Even international uh, projections and uh, multilateral uh, multinational banks are also giving this projection that Indian growth rate will be higher in the in the uh, in the world. Even it is going to surpass the China number also. So it it has given a new impetus to Indian economy, especially post COVID. We were facing extreme tough situation for economic growth. So in India somewhere it is uh, seeing that positive trajectory in economic uh, growth and economic development factor see this is one thing this is a good thing and, and recent years we need to focus another aspect india has emerged as a prominent investment destination around the world and more most of the countries in the world especially developing developed countries they are considering india as an alternative to china somewhere because of chinese aggression or uh, they want to diversify their investment from china so all these countries are focusing on india and they see india as an alternative to china they see they see india as a prominent investment destination in the world and even if you look at geopolitical scenario india is playing very prominent role if you look at g20 summit in india entire global south it supported india and india gave that platform india was the voice of global south it shows that even geopolitically also india getting stronger and stronger year on year and even in the BRICS, it talked about cre uh, creating a, another uh, multinational 
sorry multilateral rule based order it all shows that whether it is geopolitically or whether it is economically india is ready to play a bigger role in the world arena moving ahead author talks about fdi situation in our country that is foreign direct investment see the foreign direct investment in india is falling if you look at from past 3 years uh, he has given uh, data of last 2 years in 2021 22 fdi was 84 billion dollars this much of investment has been made on indian companies and in 2020 uh, 22 and 23 the investment the fdi the number reduced to 71 billion dollars this shows the declining trend and even these two numbers are lesser than 2019 data also so what it is showing is somewhere the trust factor or the confidence factor on india is reducing and this decline it is going to continue in this financial year also and mainly four sector this fdi drop has been seen the first thing is software and hardware sector and the second thing is automobile industry it also saw the lower investment and the construction uh, sector the infrastructure sector also saw the decline in foreign investment and metallurgy these are the four prominent sectors where foreign investment direct investment has reduced author has given four reasons for it the primary reason is see the interest rate in developing economies it has increased if the central bank in these developing economies if they increase their interest rate then the uh, investors in their country they keep their money in their banking system only because they are getting more interest in their economy only so why do they why do they want to take money and go to another country if there are uh, good opportunities in their country so this is the main reason the investors from the uh, developed country they are not looking at the emerging economies as of now as, as long as interest rates are high the investment will be very less and the second as, aspect is see fdi it is increasing in the countries like indonesia vietnam especially southeast asian countries are attracting a uh, more investment from the developed countries this is acting as a competitor to india and not only these southeast asian countries even other emerging countries and global south also they have become an alternative attractive market markets uh, for available investors so this is a matter of concern somewhere india's that attractiveness it, it it looks like it is reducing and the fourth issue is see we were talking about the uh, india is acting uh, like a alternative to china but author says this see this uh, idea has been circulating around the world that india is going to be an alternative to china but the thing is chinese economy is still strong chinese manufacturing sector and supply chains are extremely strong and extremely well handled by chinese government so all these reasons tell us that fdi has become a quite restricted now see we saw the numbers of fdi there is a reduction but uh, author moving ahead he it told it tells that see the situation is not Uh, uh, as bad as as the uh, number suggests situation is still strong india has that potential india has that capabilities the situation is not at all bad as number suggests if you look at the companies like uh, apple they are in agreement with uh, foxconn and it is producing uh, uh, apple mobile phones in the country and semiconductor uh, uh, the chip manufacturing is also going to india and transfer of technology is going to happen so that uh, indian manufacturing sector is going to get that boost so it all shows that india has a potential in a longer run yes it is going to be a positive movement only but as of now we are seeing some dip with respect to foreign direct investment in in our country but if you look at uh, foreign portfolio investment foreign port fpi has been increased in our country the whatever we have lost in fdi that has been manipulated that has been handled by fpi so somewhere there is a balancing factor between fdi and fpi in our country author here he poses some questions here see author is asking see is india is really an alternative alternative to china whatever the narrative that is going on on media is it true at the ground level that is one thing and india is giving for performance linked incentive to most of the companies but these companies are taking this advantage are these company companies ready to invest in india because of this pli scheme is it working 
and the third thing is are we fundamentally strong to attract investment just like china somewhere it is also been a question mark there and we telling that we are ready we have uh, uh, the policy formulation is also supporting uh, a strong environment uh, investment environment in the country but are we fundamentally strong are we politically capable to go for uh, attracting investment see that is uh, again another question mark we need to ask answer and finally does this decline reflect something deeper in our system uh, are we analyzing the problems properly all these aspects need to be addressed and who are going to answer this obviously government government should take these uh, concerns these questions very seriously they have to work in the uh, along these directions and finally the author has uh, talked about some of the concerns indian uh, uh, manufacturing sector is posing let's see the concerns of those companies who want to in, uh, invest in india but these are the factors these are uh, acting as a pullback factor to these companies the first and foremost thing is policy uncertainty usually we have this habit of as long as soon as the uh, the government changes even the policy formulation the policy objective going to change this policy uncertainty has become a very big obstacle with respect to investment in our country see china has a communist government so india has a democratic setup so our uh, political setup is different chinese political uh, setup is different china have a policy certainty but we cannot expect the same thing in our country and this policy uncertainty has become a very big obstacle in this direction especially for policy uh, foreign uh, direct investment and also uncertain business environment also uh, usually if a, uh, any case uh, any litigation went to a court of law it remains there for years and years so because of this it is going to affect the working capabilities of the companies so these investors they don't want to face all these uh, uh, anti-business environment in our country this is another concern government should take care of and uneven level playing field Indian laws have been made in a way that they are advantageous for domestic company. So this kind of discrimination, this kind of unlevel playing field, it is going to be detrimental for foreign investment. And there is a concept of arbitrary of change of rules. This is also happening in our country. See, these are the main concerns need to be addressed at a larger level. If you want a greater foreign uh, investors, if you want greater part participation of these international companies, then we must work on these things we must address these concerns of uh, these companies and see these are administrative con uh, constraints beyond these administrative constraints there are policy constraints also see if you look at india india is absent in major of major ma many trading blocks of uh, around the world if you look at rcep cpec in all these trading blocks india is not a prominent player we need these kind of economical integrations especially with the uh, grouping like uh, european union ASEAN. that strong integration that strong economic bonding and economic integration is missing in our country so at policy level we need to take some steps to make sure that we have a greater role in these grouping especially these trading blocks and see uh, one thing administrative constraints we are facing policy constraint we are facing we are we also don't have a ecosystem or a supply chain which are very strong which uh, 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 helps these countries to have a stronger movement of food even from that aspect also there is there is a lot of restrictions in our country from all the three levels these concerns need to be addressed and finally author has given a way forward and uh, the foreign direct investment it usually move towards countries which have a deeper trade agreements we should also work in that direction there are aspects like free trade agreements lower lowering our tariffs and lowering the trade bar barriers non-financial barriers and also investment incentives these are the aspects we need to work in this direction time and again many international companies they have talked about these issues in india they have complained to the government that the government should take some proactive steps with respect to the tariff and non-tariff barriers and india can consider joining groupings like rcep and signing free trade agreements with european union and uh, south american group african union these are some of the options india has what india needs is 
it has to work on administrative constraint it has to work on policy constraint and it has to make sure that we have that supply chain analysis strong uh, manufacturing or ecosystem also in our country to complement these uh, uh, investments by uh, major multinational companies this is uh, about uh, for a day guys thank you for listening this pdf is available in a book study uh, YouTube, uh, telegram channel the link is available in the description thanks for listening i'll see you guys tomorrow